Hello and welcome to part two of the intro to Caden Live. Today we're going to be creating your very first video with Caden Live, so let's waste no more time and go ahead and get started. Okay, so in the first episode of the intro to Caden Live, we showed you just how to install it on Ubuntu and the walkthrough of the interface itself. Well, today we're going to take an existing video clip and we're going to crop it down, we're going to take out the middle part, whatever you want to do to it, and we're going to render it so you can publish it to the web. So as you'll see here, I've got this video that I captured at the aquarium a little while back. If I open it using VLC, there you go, it's just a video that I took of some jellyfish. So I'll go ahead and close that and open up Caden Live. Let me drag this out of the way. You see, one thing that I can do to this, I can actually drag the video into the project tree here. If I drag it in, there it goes, it just immediately drops in. Now if you didn't want to do it that way, you can click right here where it says add clip, and then select the file from wherever it is. In my case, it's on the desktop. And there you go, there is the file that I wanted to, to pull into this. Now from here, you can drag this down into any one of the top three lines. Now on yours, Caden Live might look just a little bit different. I moved some things around, I consolidated all of the excess windows over here, the project tree effects list, effects stack, transition and undo, and left all the monitor type things over here on the right so I could get a lot more space for it. So now I've dragged this video down into the top line. If I want to now, I can just hit play on the project monitor and it'll show me what it's going to look like. And for the last few seconds there, it didn't have any audio for some reason. So if I want to, I can select this area, and you'll see here I've got several seconds left, and then I can hold Shift and press R, and that'll make a cut. That's the, the most convenient way that I've found to do it. Alternately, hit Control Z to back up. Alternately, you can come down here and select your razor tool, and just click anywhere on the clip. You see wherever I click, it makes a cut. I'm not a fan of doing it that way because it's not very precise. I really prefer to find the exact moment. And let me zoom in. Control and scroll the mouse wheel up to zoom in. I really like to select exactly where on the clip that I want to cut. So let's say that I'm watching it along again. And then the sound cuts out right about there. So I'm going to select right there and hold Shift R. And you'll see it made a cut right here, so there's actually a completely separate piece that you can move around, you can delete, you can do whatever you want to do with it. In my case, I want to cut the end off, so I'm just going to delete that. One other way that you could do this without using the razor tool, if you're cutting off of the end of your clip, and you know exactly where you want it to go, move your hand to the end of the clip itself, and you see it turned into a little arrow with a, a line at the end of it. If you click and drag on that, see it shrinks down as low, small as you want to make the clip, or as long as the clip is. Just another way to cut. Now if you're cutting out of the middle, of course you're going to select wherever you want to in the middle, do your shift R, or click if you'd prefer to do it that way. There's also a way here you can go to timeline cut clip, but you see the shift R is actually the, the shortcut for that, that's just what I always use. So I'll select another area, I'll hit shift R on it again, and this middle section is now highlighted in red, it's three separate clips now that you can move around. So if I take this middle section out by hitting the delete key or right clicking and going to delete selected item, now I've got just two shorter clips that makes my clip my total video 12 seconds long. So now if I'm watching it and I get to about this point and hit play, it jumps to the next clip as soon as that one finishes. So let's say you've taken some stuff out, let's even make a cut here. We'll drag some stuff around and put this at the beginning. So I'm going to give it enough space at the beginning and drag this one to the beginning of the clip. Just click on it and drag it around. It's just like grabbing a file on your desktop. It's, it's just like that. And now you'll see, if I watch it over, I've got this color of the jellyfish. And then it flips over to the pink. And then it flips back to the blue color. And I've just taken my clip, I've cut it into several sections, moved it all around however I want to make it work, and now I'm ready to save it and or render it. Now if I hit save, it's going to ask me where I want to save the entire project, not the file itself. So I'm going to create a new project on the desktop and we'll call it Jellyfish. And hit save. And there you go. If I minimize this now, I've got a Caden Live file on the desktop. If I close Caden Live right now and open this file using Caden Live, by default it associates with it. If I open it with Caden Live, it goes back to exactly what I had before. Now, there is one little bug with Caden Live, and I don't believe it's been addressed yet. I've been watching their bug tracking system, and I believe the bug is already in there, and it's just they haven't fixed it yet. You see, there are no audio thumbnails now. Before, there was an audio waveform that showed you what the sound looked like, so you could very easily find the breaks in your audio and cut it out. 
well it's gone now so if I come down here to the audio thumbnail and click it off and then back on you see it rebuilt the thumbnail very quickly and now I can if I zoom in on it of course this one has a lot of ambient audio so there's not really a way to to tell where there's silence but it's got it back now it's not a big deal so if I want to take this video now and turn it into something that I could put on the web since it's changed from the original I'll come up to render and you'll pick whatever format you want in a lot of cases you'll probably just want to go to your destination and select websites since you're on YouTube you might as well we can go ahead and use the YouTube standard one also that would work so let's go ahead and give it a place to go but I've been putting mine on the desktop and I'm just gonna call it jellyfish that's fine dot mp4 now you could do a two pass on it what that actually does is it does two passes over the file and it makes it slightly higher quality and I believe it makes it slightly larger all right, and that finished. So you'll look at this one. It's a little bit blocky. It's a little bit worse than the original file was. So let's go ahead and show you the way that I would normally do it for my videos. Come back up to render, go to render project, and instead of choosing websites, I always choose file rendering and MPEG2. I know a lot of people use H.264. I've personally not had very much luck out of the audio from that. The AAC audio doesn't sound very good to me. Now because the camera I'm using is 9 megabits per second, ideally I should be using MPEG-2 8000K to deal with that. But I've noticed that if I do MPEG-2 4000K, I get a very decent file size and I get a very decent quality with very little quality loss. So I'm going to select that. I could do the two pass, but that just makes it take longer. On a four or five minute video, it takes a lot longer because it has to run it twice. So I'll do that and I will call this just jellyfish.mpeg. See it's MPG instead of MP4 now. And because this is a decently short clip, it shouldn't take very long to render. There we go, the rendering is done. Now you'll see we've got jellyfish.mpeg on the desktop. It is 6.6 .6 megabytes, which if you'll compare that to the old MP4 we made, over twice the size of the original one. So if I run this MPEG now, you see it's a lot less grainy than the last one was, a lot less blocky. There is still some blockiness to it, but a lot of that has to do with the darkness of the, of the original image. And there you have it, you've created your very first video using Caden Live. You probably could have done it with another tool like OpenShot or PTV Video Editor, but this one gives you that foundation so you can keep making better and better videos, more and more complex videos, and Caden Live definitely grows and scales with you. That's all for episode 2 of the intro to Caden Live. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.